Okay, let's explore how a complex number relates to real signals. And to do this, we're going to consider the circle. So here's a circle, and we've got, I'm drawing two axes, a horizontal and a vertical axis. And what we can do is label the po a point on the circle as having a, an amplitude, a distance, a radius. We'll let, for this example, let's just call it one, make it a unit radius. And then there's going to be an angle. And we're going to put the angle relative to the horizontal axis. Now, if you can imagine yourself, so as this point, this point can move around the circle, uh, and imagine looking at this circle from if you're in the, in the paper, in the plane of the paper, and this was your eye, and you were looking along that axis. And so you, if you're looking from there into here, when the point moves around the circle, you don't have any concept of whether it's close to you or far away. If you're just looking from that side on view, you don't have any depth of field, all you're seeing is this point going up and down. And you can probably think, if you're looking from this side here, you can imagine that as it moves, let's say from this point here around to here, it's going to go from a negative value up to a positive value. And if this point was moving around at a constant rate around the circle, then it's in the time it takes to go from here to there, from this angle over here, from your looking over here, you're going to see it go from this quite a, a reasonably large negative number to a reasonably large positive number. Now in that same amount of time as it moves from here over to here, from your eye's point of view, it just goes up a little bit and then down a little bit. So as this moves from here to here, all you can see is it goes up and down by that amount. Whereas when it did the same arc, when it meted out the same arc between down here to up here, what we saw was that it changed quite a bit. And what it turns out is this is exactly a sine wave. So if I plot out as a function of theta, if we were just looking with our eye on the side, then it's going to start, let's say it starts here, and this is our starting point. So as it starts here, it's starting at a value of zero. And as it moves around here, if you're looking from the side, all you see is that it goes up. You can't see the depth. You can only see it going up. And then it gets to the top and then it comes back down again. As it moves around, all you see it doing is going up and down, up and down. And it goes up and down according to this sine wave. And so this is actually sine theta that we're familiar with. Uh, in mathematics and that's the waveform and many many waveforms in real life the waveforms that I'm generating as, I, as I'm talking now are sine waves. Now if we also imagine looking from an orthogonal direction from the bottom let's say uh, if we were to look from the bottom then we would see a very similar thing except uh, it would be starting off as a if this is the positive direction here, it would be starting off as a big number. So when we're looking from the bottom or from the top, uh, we'd see it as a big number there. And then as it moves around the circle, we can't see the depth of field in the vertical direction. All we can see is that it goes from uh, in this plane here. It goes from a big number as it moves down there. We're only seeing it moving towards there because we can't see the depth. And then it will, as it moves around here, we see it moving out to there and then moving back in and so on. So what we're seeing there is this waveform here. And this waveform, if this is the time dimension down here, plotting with time as it moves around, and this waveform here, if I turn it on the side, this waveform here is a waveform that starts at the maximum value and then comes down. It's also a sinusoidal waveform, but it's a sinusoidal waveform that at zero, at time equals zero, or at th sorry, theta, I should say, theta equals zero, it's starting at the maximum, starting at one. And that waveform we know to be cos theta. So if I'm plotting it with respect to theta, this is cos theta, and we've got sine theta. So if we look in two orthogonal directions, as this point moves around a circle, we would see a sine wave from one direction, and from an orthogonal direction, 90 degrees, we'll see a cos wave. Okay, now what's the 
uh, mathematical expression for complex numbers. So if we just think of complex, so these are real signals, let's think about complex numbers. If we just think about complex numbers for a minute, the whole notation of complex numbers says that we can write an equation for this point if this is the real, so if we label this to be the real, label this to be the imaginary, then this point here is the amplitude, which in this case is 1, times e to the j, which is the complex number j, e to the j theta. So this point is the point e to the j theta, because it's got a magnitude of 1. Okay, so how do we write a relationship between these real signals which we know about in the real world and we generate with anything that oscillates. The signals in the power supply are sinusoidal signals. Uh, the signals that we generate by vibrating our voice are sinusoidal signals and, and many of them mixed together and so on. Um, but if we just got one sinusoid, how do we relate it to this here? And it's, uh, it's quite simple. This is a complex number and we can find out the real component which is the distance along here, and the imaginary component, which is the height up here. So the real component and the imaginary component. Okay, so e to the j theta equals, this is the real component here, because this one here where we look from the bottom, that's showing us how far away along this real axis it is. So this is cos theta plus in the imaginary axis, that's this one over here, so there's j because this is in the imaginary axis, sine theta. So this is how the complex number, which can sometimes seem quite arbitrary, uh, especially to engineers and engineering students uh, and people who think about the real world um, and thinking about how that mathematics of complex numbers relates to the real world and the signals that we know about. So to take that a step further, because from the Let's think of an, getting another equation. If we were to move in the other direction, instead of this way around, we move this way around, then we would have e to the j theta negative theta. So e to the negative j theta. And what would that equal? Well, if we're looking from the bottom, we're still starting here. And we're, just because we're coming towards us or going away from this direction, we can't tell the depth of field. So as we move around in the negative direction, we still would see a cos waveform starting here and going down here. This waveform would not change if this dot moves to down first. Over here, of course, it would be the opposite because in this way, if this moves down, we're seeing it moving negative instead of positive. So this is minus j sine theta. So here are two equations. Now to, to find out what we, so this is the complex numbers in terms of real things, these real waveforms. So let's get the other way around. So if we add the left-hand side to each other and add the right-hand side to each other, we could have e to the j theta plus e to the, sorry, e to the minus j theta. So we've added those two, and now we've got to add these two. So we have two cos theta, and these ones would cancel because this is plus j sine and this is minus j sine. So they cancel. We'd have two cos. So let's put the two on the other side and make that a half, and then you've got cos theta. So here's a real waveform that we know about and we're familiar with in the real world, a cos waveform, and this is how to write it in terms of complex numbers. So those complex numbers are helpful, very helpful, in real world signals. One more step forward to make it even more real is to think what happens if this d um, dot, as we move around, moves exactly at a constant rate in time. So I've shown it here as a function of theta, so for any value of theta we can find what the value is over here. But let's let relate it to real time, so actually to time. And so if we were moving at a constant angular rate around here, then theta, we could make th replace theta with omega t. So t is time and omega is the angular rate. So for a big value of omega, uh, it would be moving fast. A small value of omega, it would be moving slow. And then we can plot our waveforms as a function of time, and we would have uh, different uh, rates of change of our waveform. So this would be one for one value of omega. For a higher value of omega, it would change more quickly, and this is a higher frequency sine wave. Um, here, 
And so for different values of omega, you get different sine waves. And so when you, a person talking with a low voice would have a low frequency, a person with a higher voice would have a higher frequency. Uh, just show that picture there more. Uh, and so then we have an equation now where we're replacing theta by omega t, and that really is a real signal. It's a, and if you put, for example, 50 hertz or 60 hertz in some countries for the power supply, if it was a power signal, a voltage signal in the power point, uh, then we would have cos of omega, uh, and there's a relationship from omega to the real uh, frequencies, which is related by 2 pi f. Omega is angular frequency, this is uh, real frequencies, so you could have here a waveform to represent the power waveform would be written down as cos of 2 pi times 60, if it's 60 hertz, times t, and that would be the waveform that really is the waveform of the power in the power supply. And now, simply by replacing the theta by the 2 pi ft in here, we have a way of writing it down in complex numbers. And in complex numbers, we can then use all of the machinery and mathematical methods of using complex numbers to solve all sorts of uh, problems and questions about what would happen to that power supply if we put it through a circuit or through a capacitor or through an inductor uh, and solve all the sorts of uh, questions you would like to know about for real uh, electric circuits with uh, sinusoidal inputs.